Hi, my name is Kelsey Lemunyan. I am a senior talent manager at Studio 71, and you're listening to the Unsigned Podcast. So thank you so much for, for coming through. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. Um, shout out to Jocelyn, who was able to um, put, you know, set this up in, in like a day, less than a day. So uh, thanks for coming through. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So excited to be chatting with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this episode, you know, I really want to pick your brain about TikTok. Obviously, it's um, a really big um, issue. I don't even want to call it an issue. It's a really big um, uh, platform, obviously, uh, but very, very hot in the music business. A lot of people are signing artists just off TikTok, off the strength of a couple of videos going really big. So definitely want to dig into that. But before we do that, we'd love to learn a little bit more about you. Obviously, um, you know, uh, uh, know of Studio 71 and, and the work that they do there. And that's kind of how I came across your stuff. Anybody that was listening to, uh, to Sam's episode a couple of weeks back, uh, that's kind of how uh, Kelsey and I got to know each other a little bit. So yeah, I don't know too much about you, and that's why I wanted to save uh, that for the episode. So let's just start right at the top. Tell me a little bit more about yourself and you know, kind of how you got into the entertainment business. Yeah, totally. So I have always been super interested in digital. I was really into YouTube in the early days and just as a viewer um, and was just really fascinated by the way creators were able to put out so much content and then also build out these really interesting and complex businesses. Um, and I just always found it to be a really interesting asset or aspect of entertainment. And it's a lot more um, fast paced than what a traditional entertainment um, normally looks like, a, a entertainment projects normally look like. So I was always really interested in the digital space, but I wasn't really sure where I was going to end up in the space because it's such a, a big uh, landscape. Yeah. So when I was in school, um, I definitely made a point to always be looking for opportunities to do stuff more in the digital side of things. So when I was a senior in college, I started um, interning at MTV um, in their digital department and was helping come up with content strategy for um, their digital teams, um, both uh, on the YouTube side of things. And then also they were doing some stuff that was very college based. So we were doing a bunch of um, videos called Intern Confidential. We were interviewing other interns to get different um, tips and tricks of how to possibly get a foot in the door at Viacom and other different um, bigger agencies or um, media companies similar to them. Um, after I graduated, I made the big trip uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast, moved out to LA and was able to get a job in PR actually. Um, at a PR firm that was working with a lot of big names um, in digital, like Gigi Gorgeous and Tyler Oakley and Ingrid Nielsen. Um, and through that, I was able to make a bunch of connections uh, that brought me over to Studio 71, where I came in as an assistant and then was able to move up to the position that I'm in now. And I currently work with about 40 creators of all different sizes. Um, and, then my and then I'm specifically very interested in TikTok and uh, working with different TikTok creators. I'm very TikTok obsessed. I'd be really embarrassed to show anyone um, how much time I spend on the app. Every time Google sent or Apple sends me that notification, I'm like, you could keep this information to yourself. We don't need to share it. Um, but it's just been really crazy to see how quickly TikTok has taken over the digital space. Like, I think that a lot of the times when these new platforms come out, it takes a while for them to really get their footing. And I think that the way that Vine kind of paved the way for TikTok, we saw a lot of really big creators come out of there and move over to YouTube. I figured that would be a pretty similar um, trajectory with TikTok as well when it started to gain traction. Like we already saw this happen with Vine that these top creators that are on the YouTube platform really were able to build their audience on Vine and then kind of bring it over. So why wouldn't they be able to do that on TikTok as well? And we've already seen that happen. There's a ton of creators that were, you know, started off with a really small small following on TikTok and have been able to transfer their audience over to YouTube and other digital platforms and, and grow their audience there as well. So a, a quick overview of me and, and my um, a TikTok obsession, which is uh, not, <laughs> not so great to admit, but here I am. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate the backstory. And yeah, just like you said, it's, um, it's, it's kind of amazing to see how fast TikTok has grown. Like, yes, it was kind of two different apps 
uh, for a couple of years, but like when they put it together, when they bought musically and, and kind of Vine had been gone for a long period of time too. Like Vine, had, uh, it was kind of popping in what, 2011, 12, 13 and 14 and kind of went away or maybe not, but that was right around the time Twitter bought it. And then they kind of shut it down a few years later and then nothing. And then you kind of had these other apps and then boom, like, TikTok has really not been around for in its current form for that long, but it is so big and so powerful. So yeah, it's amazing. And, and um, just, I think it's great to see, like, just like you're saying, like so many different people coming up and being able to, to really build a business. Like that's, that's what I think a lot of people miss too. in, in this whole thing, they're like, Oh, I want to get like famous and be a TikToker, but it's like, no, you can actually create a business. And if you, I think what's valuable, and that's one of the things I try and impart on people too, is like if you start to think like that in the beginning, um, you you probably set yourself up for for having long term success. For sure, and I think that a lot of the times with digital fame and right in this space that we're at, especially with TikTok, creators can blow up really fast, and it's like all of a sudden you wake up and you have half a million followers, and we're not really sure what to do. And I think that really taking the time to figure out, you know, what do I want to do? What do I want my audience to look like? And what kind of content do I want to put out early on when you're first starting to gain traction is really key because if you don't have those kind of core um, values at the center, it just because you're growing from there doesn't necessarily mean that you'll build, be able to build out a successful business if you're yep. not even thinking that way from the very beginning. Yeah, the, people will focus on that moment as opposed to you as the creator. And that's what you don't want. You yeah. want them to buy into you as the, as the person. Um, but cool, we'll save a bunch of that combo. I can already tell it's going in a good direction, but I want to save some of that uh, for a little bit later in the talk. Um, but would love for you to share a personal story too. You, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, you're only a few years into your career, uh, but you've been at Studio Talk for for you know over three years now. So curious to know. I'm sure, you said you've, you're you know you're already working with over forty people. I'm sure you've worked on some really cool projects. So curious to know uh, which project has been your favorite up to this point. Yeah, I've had the chance to work on a lot of really cool projects. We've done a ton of stuff in the brand space, of course. We've done like original series with Facebook Watch and a couple with IGTV as well. Um, around this time last year, I actually was able to work with one of my animation creators to launch a card game through Kickstarter. And it was honestly so much fun. It's such a cool game. Um, everyone gets to play as a baby and you have to steal candy from the other babies you're playing with. And the person who ends up with the most candy at the end um, is the the winner, uh, the baby winner of them all. So it was really cool to see how a creator that had a really strong core audience was able to kind of get his audience on his side to um, help raise the money and kickstart the seed money in order to bring a project that he was really passionate about to life. So working alongside him and he was an animation creator. So he was able to draw out all of the playing cards, which the art on them is so cool. It's called Sugar Heist. Crazy ever want to look it up ever looking for yeah. a fun game to play on the weekends um and we were able to crowdfund this and then put it into production and then we're able to you know get everyone their um card game before the holidays which was a big um big big task for sure but yeah. we were able to get it done and it, it ended up being a really fun project and really different um than uh, most of my day-to-day -day stuff so it, it was really great to work on and, and kind of see that through start to finish that that's awesome too. And I think extremely important. You take something that is uh, digital, right? The, this person, this creator, their brand is, is digital, but then to flip it and make something tangible and real and create a product and sell it directly to your audience. That's like the fun stuff. Cause it's like, Hey, this crazy idea I had, I actually built something. You guys helped me build it. And then I gave it to you. And that's like the best feeling. I think that is like the best case scenario because it's a win-win for the audience as well as, uh, you know, the creator. Yeah, definitely. I think that a really big thing when you're starting to, you know, move into the product space is making sure that your audience feels involved from the very beginning of it. I think if you just like show up one day and you're like, here's some new stuff that I'm selling, it might not go so well, but when you are building your audience and really making sure they feel involved with the process from the start, letting them know like, 
oh, I'm starting to work on a card game. I'm designing the cards. You guys are going to be so excited. I think that this is going to be really great for you and kind of build up the hype and also make them feel like they're involved with the process from the beginning. I think that's, you know, a really key aspect to have for long-term success with, you know, uh, products outside of um, YouTube and, and, you know, outside of the digital space. Yeah, that's it's something that a lot of people miss out on because yeah. um, they tend to just throw things out and be like, hey, this is what I made. Like, why don't you like it? And I think uh, speaking to, to the music business specifically, like a lot of young artists struggle with that, too, because they sit, they spend a bunch of time like making a song and then they're like, listen to it. And yeah. they don't understand why the audience doesn't listen to it. And it's like, hey, guys, they're not saying that it's not good. They're saying they just don't know why they should listen to it. And that's yeah. up to you to bring that audience along to share your story. So I think there's a lot to take from that as well. Yeah, definitely. Especially on the music. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's worked with so many artists that have just said that too, that are just like, my music's great, but why isn't anyone here? And it's like, well, because you just made something and you threw it at them. It's like, yeah. there's, there, it's, the days of the, um, you know, old school media platforms where it was one to many, right? It was like, you know, Michael Jackson talking to a million people at once. Those days are gone. It's really about this connection of many to many, like one to one and many to many all happening at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So, yeah. oh, go ahead. Sorry. It sounded like it might've been a little bit of a lag there. So I was like, wait, uh, oh, <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, let's, we'd love to transition a little bit and, and talk about what your day-to-day -day looks like at Studio 71 too. So you're working with 40 different artists, creators. How does, you know, in, in you're focusing on TikTok, but you're also part of, you know, I'm sure a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of other platforms. So take us through a little bit of what your day-to-day -day looks like. Yeah, I spend a good amount of my day working with brands and working on different brand opportunities for my whole roster. So we have brands that both reach out to our talent directly and want to work with them very specifically um, and figuring out all the deal points that will go along with that, both the fee, exclusivity, any whitelisting or anything, um, any usage rights that are involved with the deals. So negotiating that for um, anything that comes my way. And then we also have a team that's dedicated to pitching out our talent as well. So working alongside them to make sure that they have the most updated information, what their audience is looking like, anytime they're doing any new content that the brand team should be aware of, anything that they might be a good fit for. So both fielding any inbounded opportunities that come their way and then pitching them out for any outbound opportunities that come their way. And then also working on any larger projects that they might be interested in at the time. So whether it's a card game, I'm working on a clothing line right now as well, um, making sure that we have different resources that they can um, utilize in order to make um, any project that they're interested in, in doing come to life and how we can kind of take first steps and you know work out any deal points that are needed to, to get these things launched in, in, in market. Um, and then also I work with creators a lot on content strategy, coming up with different video ideas, um, things that they could be doing differently to be playing better in the algorithm. Um, any trends that we've seen come through that we feel like they might be a good fit for, making sure that the, those suggestions are top of mind and that they're you know, thinking not only on the content they are making, but also the content that other people in the space are making and how they can kind of um, you know, utilize the momentum that's coming from that to bring uh, new eyes to their their content as well. That, that it sounds like a full plate every day. That there, there's a lot going on in, in a whole yeah, bunch of different sure. uh, directions, um, which is again very relatable to to a lot of artists as well. I think the difference is like they don't um, have the team. They're doing a lot of that stuff, stuff themselves. And it's very much, uh, you're, you're in the trenches as well. Like, you know what it's like. So kind of along that line of thinking, um, curious, uh, just as like a general uh, overview too, like, do you have any tips for, for people that are looking to uh, reach out and establish new relationships with uh, other creators or other brands? <clears throat> How should someone forge a new relationship? Yeah, I feel like especially right now in this like digital, you know, everyone's still pretty much at home. Most people are spending a lot of time on their computers just sorting through emails. So when you are reaching out to someone, 
I definitely think that it's helpful to include things that a make you stand out so that way you kind of jump out in a, a packed inbox and also make things um, really easy to digest and really eye-catching. So sometimes when we're getting, you know, re, uh, contacted by brands, they'll be sure to include like a media kit with it and let us know like pretty, you know, concise, very easy to follow what the brand is, what their, you know, messaging is, what they're looking for from creators, what kind of creators they're looking for. Um, and, you know, make sure that's all packaged up really neatly to, to look through quickly um, in order to make sure that, you know, they're getting everything across in an efficient way. And I think the same thing can go for um, creators that are looking to reach out for, you know, to brands and to management, looking at, you know, what have I done so far and what am I hoping to do from here? Putting together a quick list of like, okay, these are brands that I've worked with in the past. This is what, I, you know, my numbers are right now. This is, you know, the content that I'm really proud of. Um, and this is where I want to go moving forward. And then that gives the person that you're reaching out to a very quick, you know, overview of what they've done, where they want to go. And it's like, am I the right person to help them get to those next steps? Like, do I have you know, the contacts of, in, um, am I the right person that can get them where they want to go? And then if not, do I know somebody that, you know, is a better fit for them or, or could help them wherever they, you know, might want to go from here. So I think that definitely being concise and, you know, making sure that you're including a lot of um, quality information um, and some of your best work when reaching out to brands and, and different management is like really key to make sure that they have good overview of who you are and, and where you want to go from here. Yeah, well said. I think uh, the biggest takeaway there is is like that value proposition. Like, yeah. make sure that when you're reaching out to somebody, there's value for that person. You're not just saying, "Hey, can you give me this thing? Can you give me an opportunity?" It's like, what's in it for them? And if yeah. you you know kind of flip it and and think about the other person first, chances are they'll be more receptive. Those things stand out in an inbox, right? Like, what's and and that goes to like, what is the title? What's the subject of the email? And if it's something only for you, why are they going to open it? Yeah, totally. If someone like reaches out, it's like, I would like to have a number one song. It's like, all right, well, what, what have you done so far? You know, that you have under your belt, like what kind of steps have you taken? Have you professionally recorded music? Have you just posted right. stuff online? Are you looking to, you know, get into a studio soon? I think are all like really key pieces of information to share just so that way like, everyone kind of knows where we're entering and, and where we want to move move from there everybody wants you know the, to be number one in whatever they're doing but what are the concrete um steps you've already taken and how can we help you grow from there yep well well said well said um so i want to talk about uh tiktok for a yeah. second um you know you talked about uh, more than a second we'll, we'll say um uh you know you talked about one of the things that you do in your day-to-day -day is uh you know kind of content strategy helping and creators figure out, you know, what's working on their plot, you know, what's working on their pages, what's working on other artists pages, or other creator pages, and, and seeing how they can, you know, potentially add some of that and remix that for, you know, their audience. So uh, want to start there. How do you when you start working with an artist who's, you know, not super big, obviously, because they have a lot of things moving, but if you, you start working with somebody who's a little bit on the smaller side, how do you help them build their following? What are the things that from an early stage are kind of like boilerplate, like they need to have X, Y, and Z to start, and then you can help them scale from there. Yeah, I think that a really good thing for creators when they're trying to figure out um, a content strategy is to look at other creators kind of in their circle and what um, is going on in the space that they're in. So for example, if you are a, you know, a cooking creator, like what are some uh, who are some cooking creators that you look up to that are much bigger than you and what kind of content do they put out what do how do they interact with their audience as well and looking at those kinds of um interactions that they're having with their fans and how they were able to help build up their audience so i think that in terms of the content side of things it's really key to know what's going on in the um, space that you're in in general and then also what's going on on the app as a whole especially on TikTok, there's so many trends that are coming in and out every day. Um, when you see something that's popping off and you want to, you know, figure, figuring out your own way to put your own twist on the trend is the best way to get involved with it and put your content um, 
on eyes of people that haven't seen you before. So if you are a musician and most of your content is music based, it's great to constantly be putting out music ba music based content and then also look at other musicians and what kind of content they're building. But if you see something that's happening on the platform and you're like, okay, I think that I could put my own spin on that to really jump on those trends as soon as you see them because that's gonna be the best way to interact with the algorithm to put new um, new eyes onto your content and try and grow your audience from there. And then I also think that, um, well, that's, that's mostly in terms of content. We'll yeah, okay, cool, cool. Um, and, and essentially what that really is for, for people that are like just starting out is like market research. Yeah. Like that's, it's like, you gotta pay attention. You gotta see what's already moving and shaking. Um, as opposed to starting from zero, because it's very hard if you're just trying to make something out of thin air. So I think it, it, it serves like a number of purposes. Um, one, it gives you some direction, right? Hey, this is what's working. Um, and it also saves you some time, right? Because if you just have to sit there and throw ideas and like try and put things out there to see what it hits, it's time consuming. And then what oftentimes happens is that you get burnt out from that. And then that's when you stop doing it. And then uh, you know, the world doesn't necessarily get to see, you know, some potential greatness that could be there because you didn't start off the right way. So I appreciate you sharing that insight because I don't think, I think a lot of people just open it up any app, right? And they just, they're like, okay, I got to make something here and they don't know what to make and they get stuck. Yeah. And I think especially on TikTok, like a big part of, um, uh, you know, TikTok, a lot of the trends are inside jokes. And first you have to be on the inside of the joke before you can participate too. Right. And a lot of these trends are building off of other trends that already existed. So I think making sure that you feel um, really acclimated to the community and that you're participating and also a consumer of it is really key because it, it does like look off when people are just, you know, doing content and they don't really understand, you know, the, where these trends came from and how they got to the point that we're at now. So I definitely think like making sure that you're on the inside of the inside jokes before, uh, you know, going ahead and putting your own spin on it is, is helpful too to make sure the content feels natural and, and you know, um, doesn't look awkward amongst the other videos that people might be watching. Yeah, people it, like us as viewers, we're, we're uh, so much more educated nowadays. And like, we've seen the content, we've seen something that's natural and real and authentic. And then we've seen a bunch of fake shit as well, where people are just like famous people tend to do this a lot of times. They're trying to keep their fame going and it's not real and it doesn't hit and it doesn't land. Um, and then they are the joke. A lot of times they're not even a part of the joke. Um, so yeah, well, well said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with, with that in mind, what, what types of content like um, do you see performing really well on TikTok right now? Is there any, yeah. obviously dance trends are always like a big thing, but is there something in particular over the last like month or two months that are like, um, oh, that this is like really hitting or does it really depend on who's creating it? And like, is it just, is it too hard to, to say exactly what works? Yeah, I think that the, the best part about TikTok is it's such a huge community now that there are so many different subsets of the community that exists on the platform and similar ways to how YouTube is now as well. I feel like, you know, early days of YouTube, you would go on and you would find a lot of sketch videos or, you know, a couple of beauty tutorials, but now there's really content for everyone um, across mm. all platforms. So I think that, you know, no matter what you're looking for on the platform, you'll be able to find it. And then the different trends exist within all of those different communities. So I think that there's a lot of um, opportunities to really, you know, um, hone in on like a small community and really grow an audience from there, whether it's something like, you know, an, a music artist that is releasing a song um, in, in indie pop, let's say genre, and they've been, you know, interacting with a lot of other um, indie pop accounts and have been, you know, playing on the different memes that are going on on that area of TikTok, then your music is going to start being fed to those people that are also consuming the same content that you're doing. Um, so I think that when you're looking at different trends, it's really good to look at you know, your community that you're trying to target and see like what the conversation is there in order to make sure that um, you're hitting the right audience for the content that you're putting out. But in general, the trends on TikTok change so quickly that it's really a, can be different day to day. 
Um, and it's just like good to be, you know, an active user of the app in order to make sure you're um, on par with whatever, what is going on at the moment. Gotcha. Again, it sounds uh, more like listening before speaking. To yeah, totally. And I think that another thing that a lot of people really miss um, when they're starting out and trying to grow an audience is like communicating directly with the people that are watching you and, you know, having those interactions with them. I think that the creators that you look at that have had a really long, um, you know, career in, in building out digital content have really made sure to at the core that they are building a community that feels invested in them. And the best way to get, you know, your audience to feel as though that they're part of a community that, you know, this, this is a group effort and we're all doing, we're all building this up together. Feels like the creator really cares about the audience and a great way to do that is just to interact with comments and, you know, stitch people's videos or duet their videos and make sure that they feel like they're being heard by the creator that they look up to and, and you know, watch so much. Yeah, it's, it's, um, uh, I just see the people that are doing it best don't consider uh, their followers, followers, yeah. right? It really is about m more us than like me and you guys are following me. Like, I feel like that term is going to slowly start to fade away. Like you're not going to see followers anymore that they're going to change it to something else to, to make it a little bit more um, appropriate or these different, uh, a different app is going to pop up and it's just going to have a better understanding. Like I think discord does like a really good job of that, right? It's a community and everyone is like, Hey, we're here for this. You're not really following, um, you know, in I guess in the traditional social media sense. Yeah, I think Discord is like a great example of everybody, you know, these numbers that you see when you're lo looking at views and looking at likes are actual people behind it and that have right. thoughts and opinions as well. And so like actually get, you know, that insight from them directly is really key. And then to be taking that and, and using that to shift and um, form the types of content that you're going to be putting out moving forward is definitely the way to go because you're bringing those people that are already interested in you um, on this journey with you and making sure they feel really involved with what you're putting out and feel more invested into what you're going to do next. Um, yeah. Rather than just like, oh yeah, that's this video got a million views. It's like, well, a million people is a lot of people to be watching it. What you know, what were their thoughts on it? Do you know, should you do another video like this? Should you maybe shift and do what you just did in the first part and expand on that, or um, really taking you know the feedback um, seriously and making sure that they feel like you know they're being listened to and, and heard as well. Yep, it, it's community building. It's not, again, not one to many. It's it's all of us at, at one time. Um, wanted to get your your quick take on, you know, what, what do you think are three things that artists can do on TikTok to help build their exposure? Three, like, simple things. Um, you know, we talked about a couple so far, but, um, you, you know, even just distilling some of those down in, into some bullet points, what, what are three that you think are extremely important for people that are starting out? Yeah, I think on the music side of things, it's really important to like tease out what you're you're working on and making sure people have some of those behind the scenes looks into things. I think that um, we all saw when Olivia Rodrigo had dropped um, her first single, people were going crazy and, you know, huge hit right off the bat, but she actually had posted a teaser to that on TikTok. Um, of like four months prior. So people had been, you know, knowing that there something like this was coming and been on the lookout for it, that when it came that they were really ready and excited for it. And then from there, it just grew and exploded into, you know, this huge hit that we all know and can't get out of our head um, <laughs> and can't get off of TikTok. Um, so I think that, that that's really a, a great way to, um, you know, make sure your audience is involved from the beginning by teasing out little things, even if they're unpopular polished and even if it's um you know something that's not finished I think not taking yourself too seriously on the app is also a really great strategy I think that sometimes people you know feel that their content's great and that it should not be you know teased at all but when creators get on the inside joke of that their audience is having you know people really respond well to that whether it's you know um 
I think that a, a great example is Tana Mojo um, had a little clip that was going viral and she then she went ahead and recreated the clip herself and people you know went crazy thought it was so funny that she was also um, on the inside of her own joke so I think that um, you know definitely teasing out projects that you're working on from the beginning building up the hype around that not taking yourself too seriously on the app and making sure your creators feel um, in, or your um, followers fans feel really involved with the projects that you're doing are all really key to keep in mind when it's starting to build out um a following and, and grow on on pretty much any digital platform but especially on tiktok yeah um i think that's also just great life advice right try not to take yourself too seriously because some shit's gonna happen and you're gonna look dumb for a minute it, it happens to everybody you know uh it's better to just roll with it as opposed to being, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, defensive with it. Uh, but yeah, well said. Um, another thing that I, I want to talk about that I see a lot of <clears throat> artists um, struggle with, um, and, and I understand why, because I mean, when I was young, I, I did the same thing. And that is, you know, trying to shoot for the moon right off the bat, not necessarily do the work, or a lot of the work, but reach out to, um, you know, the Kelsey's of the world to, you know, try and get a leg up to, so that you can start pitching me as an artist to brands, you know, when I haven't really done the work or built up the following. So curious your thoughts on that. Do you think, you know, artists, you know, should spend their time trying to catch, you know, your eye, a manager's eye, a lawyer's eye, a record label's eye, or do you think they should spend their time trying to, you know, reach, you know, the, the, the eyes of their potential fans? Yeah, I think that um, content's definitely key for all things. So I think really focusing on the work that you're doing yourself and, and you know, making sure that you're putting out the best music possible, stuff that you feel really proud about is always key first. Um, and then working on building off an audience. Once you have the audience, brands are definitely going to be interested in working with you. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily focus on being really appealing to brands right off the bat, because when you have a small following, while there is, you know, a, a great market for micro influencers, it's not as strong as what you see with these larger creators. So I think that focusing on making content that you feel really proud of and then growing your audience. And then from there, you'll definitely start to see interest from brands and different managers that will be able to help you grow and, and monetize off of it from there. But you really need to have that base before you're able to, to move on to that next step. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, again, couldn't agree more. I think it really is about uh, going deep and spending uh, the time on creating the audience because then that's what's going to give you the leverage, right? Exactly. Like if you don't have the audience and you go to the brand and you're like, hey, let's do a deal, they're going to just give you whatever they give you and you have to like take it or leave it as opposed to building up the following and then being able to have control of that conversation uh, with the brand. I think uh, those are two very, very different things. And, um, you know, artists sometimes lose sight of that because they think, oh, let me just get the brand partnership and then I'll yeah. be in front of people. Uh, again, they're not putting themselves in the in the brand's shoes. It's like, why would the brand want to work with, you know, yeah. Nike can't work with somebody with, you know, I got 2,500, you know, 2,500 followers. They can't work with me because I'm not a big enough audience for what they need to do to drive sales. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you and it's totally great to have you know ambitions and goals of being like I really right. am passionate about Nike I'm a huge fan of their product and I feel like my content would do really well with what their marketing strategy is and then it's like if the big goal is to ultimately work with Nike what are the things that I should do like leading up to get a partnership with them so I should like really make sure that when I'm wearing Nike I'm putting it on my stories putting yep. it on my you know my feed tagging them try to get their attention that way so that way when, when they do reach out you can clearly show them I've been a fan of you for a really long time I, this is something that I feel like my audience would really resonate with and now you have the upper hand because your audience is also aware that this is a big partnership for you and something that you've been excited about for a long time um, and you can kind of use that as a, as a uh, tool to negotiate um, with Nike then as well yeah um, I think um, uh, a number of things have changed too. And, and I've definitely learned this the hard way. It's just that ideas are a dime a dozen. Yeah. Right. It, it, it really is about the execution of things like coming to a brand and saying, Hey, I have a great idea. Isn't enough anymore. 
um, because they don't need that. They, again, from their thinking, from their perspective, they don't need that when they can, you know, go over here and look at, you know, X, Y, and Z artist, athlete, brand ambassador that's doing numbers. It's like, thanks for the idea. I'm going to go do it over here. Why would I do it with you? You don't have what we need. Um, so I think it's important to have the great idea, but then it's equally, maybe even more important to, to execute on that idea, to actually bring it to fruition, because that's a lot harder, bringing all these moving pieces together and then actually creating something. So again, it goes back to, just like you were saying, building something with your audience, having that in mind, because then it's then that's real. That connection's real. Those products become real. And then that's what you need to, to form good partnerships with anybody. Totally. Yeah, completely agree. Gotcha. Cool. So we're coming down to time. Only have a couple of questions left for you, but um, I, I like to ask this. Um, and I mean, we've kind of talked about it in, in, in other forms, but I, I like to ask it directly too. What do you think um, are some of the things that artists forget to do, uh, creators forget to do, uh, when uploading their content to whether it be TikTok or, or any platform? Um, I think that a lot of the times creators will, you know, especially on TikTok, not necessarily spend that much time thinking about the caption aspect of it or um, closed captions for their videos. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok has made it really easy now to put closed captions on their videos. And I think that a lot of the times creators don't think people really use that function. But now that, you know, the world's opening up a little bit more and people are spending more time in public, I think that people are definitely utilizing that feature a lot more to be sneaking in a couple of videos while they're like waiting for a coffee or, you know, waiting to pick up food or whatever yep. it might be. Um, so I think that um, in general, a lot of creators don't um, use the tools that the um, platforms are providing to them. So when, you know, they're rolling out tools like this, like closed captioning or different effects or, you know, different things, they really want to encourage creators to use it because they feel like there's something missing on their platform. Otherwise, they wouldn't have spent the time to go and, and build it out. Right. Um, so when these things roll out, it's a really great chance to capitalize off of it and know that like, okay, TikTok is, you know, launching this new feature. They want people to use it. Their algorithm will be supporting this new feature because they want people to use it. I should jump on it right away and, and go ahead and, and use that um, new feature in order to get more eyes on my content. And then I also think like the actual captions of um, content doesn't necessarily get as much thought put into it as the videos themselves or the pictures themselves. And that can be just as valuable um, uh, and, you know, can kind of continue the story or the interactions uh, with creators. So putting a question maybe for p calling people to comment down below and, you know, putting a call to action there can also be a great way to get other people to interact with your videos and um, which also helps it perform better in the algorithm, which helps grow an audience. All for a second. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's just like this. It's like, not only, it, and it's tough. Like, um, uh, again, I don't, the other thing I try and hit home with a lot of people too, is that this stuff, is not um it's it's not easy to do like this is simple right the the process of it um is what's hard right the understanding of like okay i gotta create video and i gotta put a caption make sure i put closed captions like that is a simple form simple simple uh, uh path to follow the mm -hmm. the tough part is doing it yeah. And doing it consistently and doing it, you know, at, at, at a high level and then going back and like looking at what you did, what worked, what didn't work and continuing to like reiterate and, and um, experiment. And um, that's what I always like to hit home is like, it's, it's hard. This is hard work and you got to put in the time, you got to put in the effort. Yeah. We don't mean to over, over simplify it um, and, and say like, Oh, yeah, this is just super easy. Just make a video, put it out. And then like you become famous. Like that is not what we're saying at all. It is about work. It's about, um, you know, putting in the time and effort. And if you do that, just like anything else in life, good things, you know, happen to good people. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. I think a lot of the times people are like, Oh, I'll just post a couple videos on TikTok. Anyone can yeah. be an influencer. Um, and it really is not the case at all. There's a ton of work that goes behind everything that you see. Um, like my dad always says that there's like no job that exists that doesn't require hard work. And I'm like, it is so true because you really 
like, well, you know, the idea is like, oh, I could just post a couple of videos and then be famous overnight and I don't have to do a put any effort into it. But if that's your attitude for it, it's going to be very short lived one. And two, you're likely not going to see a ton of revenue come from it anyway, because those like, um, very quick, like, you know, um, videos that don't have a lot of effort in it tend to not, you know, do very well. or, they, or Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they don't stick around. And, and yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it's funny too. I, this is like, this conversation has been going on in different forms for years and years and years. It's like, you know, when you go to a museum and you see a Jackson Pollock and you're like, I could do that. Yeah. yeah but you didn't do that. Right. Yeah. And, and that, and he didn't just do it once and he did it on purpose and he did it with intent. And that comes from everything that we we're talking about. He was listening to himself. He was listening to what was going on within the art world at that time, why those things were important to him, the colors, right? Like, Oh, I want to use these colors for specific reasons because I feel this type of way. Although again, that's simple. His ideas were simple, but it's still, it's, it's hard work. He didn't, it, it wasn't simple to work that hard and continue to do it when, even when you're not having success early on, you know, like a lot of times people create a certain type of content and it doesn't hit for, for a long period of time. And like, it is about going through that mm -hmm. and like, you gotta, you gotta get through, you know, the, those early hurdles because it's like, it's just like anything else in life. It's like pressure testing you. Like, do you really want to be here? Do exactly. you really want to keep doing this? And if you do, then, and you keep putting in the time and effort, good things will happen, but you gotta, you gotta keep at it. Exactly. It will all come in due time, but you just have to put the work in and, and really, you know, practice and cultivate your craft. And then after that, you'll start to see the results for sure. Yeah. Well said. All right. Well, we're coming down to time, but I, I do like to ask these two final ones at the end. You know, what are you working on that, that you're super excited about and uh, uh, where can people contact you? Yeah, I'm working on a, a couple of projects right now. I'm working on a little clothing line with one of my creators. Uh, her name's Giannina. That's going to be coming out next month. Um, and a few other things I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about <laughs> at the moment, but that's something I can definitely share for sure. Um, and if you want to find me, you could find my um, Instagram is just Kelsey with a Y, Y, and then L at the end instead of an E. Kelsey A. <laughs> that's it. There you there you go. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, Kelsey, appreciate the time. Once again, glad we were able to chop it up. Th thanks for the insights. I think, you know, a lot of people, um, who are looking to TikTok as, as a place where they could potentially build an audience, um, you know, could use these insights, you know, day in and day out. So, so again, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It was great chatting with you about tech. I could talk about TikTok all day. So. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. We'll have to do a couple of versions of these, like as new updates roll out, you know, as, as the years go on. So uh, again, appreciate the time and, and look forward to talking soon. Sounds good. Thanks so much.